Scattered across America are dozens of empty and forlorn buildings, filled with the memories of their occupants' misery and despair, and a lingering history of violence, torture, and even murder. These are America's abandoned prisons, and the stories of the most haunted prisons in the country would shock and horrify the most hardened paranormal enthusiast. Philadelphia's Eastern State Penitentiary is one of the oldest prisons in the U.S. Founded by Quakers in 1829, the prison remained open for nearly 150 years before it was closed in the 1970s. It should come as no surprise then that the prison is also rumored to be one of the most haunted places in America, with its grand and impressive architecture complete with vaulted stone ceilings and imposing guard towers topped with medieval-style battlements. It certainly looks haunted. And there's plenty of real darkness in the prison's century-and-a-half-long history to lend credence to the idea that the tortured souls of former inmates still haunt the prison's abandoned cells and corridors. Ghost stories have haunted Eastern State Pens since the 1940s, with visitors, staff, guards, and even former inmates reporting eerie encounters and unexplained phenomena. Numerous witnesses have heard ghostly footsteps and disembodied voices echoing through the supposedly empty corridors. Others have reported seeing shadowy figures and ghostly faces in the now abandoned cell blocks, or glimpsing the outline of a guard in one of the unused towers. Gary Johnson was a locksmith who worked at the prison in the 1990s. One day, while he was working to unjam the old-fashioned lock on one of the cells, he suddenly felt overcome with a sense of fear and dread. He felt an unseen force grip him, and he was unable to move. Then, as he stood there frozen and terrified, the cell wall became covered with tormented ghostly faces, one of which seemed to be beckoning him toward it. Some of the darker parts of the prison's history may have also left a permanent impression on the building. The prison's earliest inmates were apparently subjected to horrific punishments in supposed efforts to reform them, and more than a few inmates met a brutal death within the prison walls. Unfortunately, prisoners were subjected to the iron gag, a horrific torture device that involved an iron collar placed on the inmate's mouth and attached to their hands, which were tied behind their back. The slightest inevitable movement of the arms would cause the collar to gouge and tear into the inmate's tongue. Others were doused in cold water and hung naked outside the wall in frigid temperatures until their skin froze. Some experienced the horrors of the mad chair, a torture device that inmates were strapped into straight coat style, often so tightly that all circulation to their limbs would be completely cut off, sometimes to the point that the limb had to be amputated afterward. But the most disturbing horror stories and most of the paranormal activity comes from the prison's dungeon-like basement. Deep underground, inside the stone fortress's foundations, particularly troublesome inmates were subjected to the most inhumane form of solitary confinement imaginable in the hole. The hole was dark and dank, with no bed, no toilet, hardly any food or water, or even air. Completely isolated with no human contact whatsoever, many prisoners went insane inside the hole. With this kind of darkness in its history, it's no wonder that countless witnesses have reported hearing tortured wails, piercing screams, and desperate moans from within the supposedly empty and abandoned building. But don't take their word for it. The facility is open to the public as a historic site, so brave tourists can visit and see for themselves if there's any truth to the ghost stories, if they dare. While the history of torture is sure to leave its mark on a building, a long tradition of executions is sure to create the perfect environment for the tormented spirits of those who were killed, only to return. Built in 1876 on the outskirts of the tiny town of Moundsville, the imposing stone facade of West Virginia State Penitentiary resembles a gothic fortress. The prison housed thousands of the country's most violent criminals in its 100-plus year history often under abysmal conditions. The prison was extremely overcrowded, often forcing three violent grown men to share a single five-foot by seven-foot cell. The inmates of Virginia State Penitentiary were the worst of the worst, and many of them lost their lives behind the chilling stone walls of the prison. Ninety-four men were executed on the site, eighty-five of them were hanged, and a further nine of them were executed by the electric chair. The 1931 execution of Frank Heyer was particularly gruesome and resulted in the executions of prisoners no longer being a public spectacle. Hire was set to be hanged, which at the time involved carefully calculating the prisoner's weight and drop distance to ensure a quick and relatively painless death for the inmate. But in Hire's case, the calculations were off, and when the floor dropped out from under him, he fell with such force that he was instantly decapitated in front of a crowd of stunned and horrified onlookers. Aside from the many deaths by execution, many more inmates lost their lives at the hands of fellow prisoners and possibly even a guard or two. Countless inmates were stabbed with improvised blades, ruthlessly beaten to death, or hung to die in their cells. Since its closing in 1995, 
Virginia State Penitentiary has become known as one of the most haunted sites in the entire country. Most of the activity reported by staff and visitors comes from the North Hall, where the most dangerous inmates were kept. Witnesses report seeing shadowy figures and hearing disembodied footsteps when visiting the area, even when they're the only people in the building. Other reports come from the hole in the Sugar Shack, an underground recreation room used by the inmates when the weather was too bad for them to go outside. Some of the prison's most brutal and violent incidents happened here, where it was difficult for guards to keep watch and intervene, and impossible for a victim to escape. In these dank subterranean spaces, witnesses not only report seeing and hearing unexplainable things, but also experience an overwhelming sense of panic and a paranoid feeling of being watched. One reporter got more than he bargained for when he visited the prison in an effort to debunk the rumors of paranormal activity. The reporter was given a thorough tour of the prison and a detailed account of its gruesome history before he was left alone in the building at night. As he explored the empty corridors and abandoned cells, he encountered nothing but a stray cat and was starting to feel more confident as he set off downstairs to explore the hole in the sugar shack. Again, he didn't see or hear anything, but he couldn't shake the feeling of being watched and a sense of intense paranoia. He decided to head out into the yard to regroup and get some fresh air before continuing his explorations. While outside, he turned back to look at the wall of the prison's notorious North Hall, and just as he looked up, he saw a shadowy figure walk across one of the hall's highest windows. After that experience, the reporter was unable to stomach the idea of going back inside, and he left hours before his midnight deadline. Some prisons have always been a sad and horrifying place, but others started out on a much more positive note before descending into chaos, violence, and of course, paranormal activity. The Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio is famous for being the setting of the movie The Shawshank Redemption, but it's infamous for its supposed hauntings and paranormal activity. Opened in 1896, the Ohio State Reformatory was meant to be a middle ground facility for criminals who were too old for the juvenile system but not hardened enough to warrant a sentence at the notorious Ohio State Penitentiary in Columbus. When it first opened, the prison was praised for its revolutionary and humane methods for reforming first-time offenders, but before long the prison would descend into neglect and disrepair, and it would become known for rampant abuse, torture, and even murder. By the 1930s, Ohio State Reformatory had become overcrowded, filthy, and nearly uninhabitable. Despite a lawsuit filed by former inmates alleging that the facility was unfit for occupation, the prison remained open until 1986. Since then, rumors of paranormal activity have flourished, and many believe the prison is haunted by tormented spirits of former inmates, guards, and even prison officials. Witnesses have reported paranormal activity emanating from the prison's basement, the home of their local control cell, aka solitary confinement. Here, difficult inmates were locked away in total darkness and isolation, often for weeks on end. Visitors report hearing tortured screams and moans coming from the basement, as well as hearing disembodied footsteps and seeing unexplainable apparitions. Others claim to have overheard a whispered conversation between a man and a woman, too indistinct to make out, but too insistent to ignore, only to find that they were indeed alone in the building. It's not just the prison inmates that face tragedy. In 1948, the reformatory's farm boss and his wife and daughter were kidnapped by former inmates looking for revenge for their mistreatment in the prison walls. The boss and his family were shot to death, and one of the perpetrators was caught and executed in the prison. And this was not the only tragic death of a prison administrator and their family to have occurred in the prison's history. One of the most frequently witnessed apparitions is that of the prison's resident ghost, Helen. Helen was the wife of one of the prison's former wardens, Arthur Glatke. As was common at the time, the warden and his family lived on site at the prison in an apartment in the prison's administration wing. Helen met a tragic end in that very apartment when a loaded handgun fell off a shelf in a closet, hit the floor, and went off, fatally wounding her. According to numerous witnesses, Helen's ghost still haunts the apartment to this day, and visitors can often catch a whiff of her perfume when touring the administration wing. Helen's death wasn't the only tragedy to strike in the warden's apartment. Ten years after her death, another warden had a heart attack and died at his desk. With all this tragedy and misery in one place, it's no wonder that the Ohio State Reformatory is considered one of the most haunted sites in America. Prisons may be notorious for the kinds of stories of violence and disrepair that make perfect fodder for paranormal activity, but some of the country's most notorious police stations have their own dark history that makes them the perfect setting for a haunting. Maxwell Street Police Station in Chicago, Illinois was one of the most violent and brutal police stations in the entire country. The station was built in 1889 in the neighborhood known as Bloody Maxwell, a rough and violent neighborhood that was home to a large population of Italian immigrants. 
It was also the turf of some of the city's most notorious mobsters, including the Jenny Brothers, close associates of the legendary gangster Al Capone. The station was well known for extreme corruption. Officers were known to take bribes to either look the other way or in some cases help the mobsters accomplish their crimes. But it's the station's basement dungeon that's the source of most of the rumors of paranormal activity that continue to this day. The dungeon was a place of brutality and torture, and many criminals who found themselves in the dark, dank holding cells would not leave the station alive. For decades, witnesses have reported hearing the screams and moans of tortured prisoners and the ominous rattling of handcuffs and cell bars emanating from the basement. The station closed in 1997 and is now used to film the TV show Chicago PD. Prisons in general are certainly not pleasant places under the best of circumstances, but with their histories of misery and despair, torture and murder, it's no wonder that many of the country's prisons are some of the most haunted places on earth. If you thought this video was fascinating, be sure and check out our other videos, like this one, called Scary Urban Legends That'll Keep You Up at Night. Or maybe you'll like this other video instead.